Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Michael down your Vincents and please give a warm squanch to the co-creator of Rick and Morty and Squanch Tendo, Justin Roiland. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, we've heard a lot of the granular details of VR, but I think it's time that we pull back a bit and we look at the larger image of VR, the, the big full picture. So we're gonna do the keynote, VRLA 2017, the state of address of VR, past or present, past and future. So here we go, let's dive in here. So what is VR? Is it volcano rides? <laughs> Violent roast? No, no, it's not that. That's not what that means. That's not what, that's not a, what a VR is. It's virtual reality. That's what it, that's what it stands for. Um, uh, we, 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 this is a thing that we've all, we've all been. <laughs> I think everyone in this room has sort of had this moment at one, one point in time or another, back, years back. So, you know, last year, a couple years ago, it was Zorbing Balls, right? Everyone was, that was the big hit of the, that was what we were all excited about, all of us together. <laughs> Not anymore, that's out. Now, virtual reality. <laughs> in. We're doing it. We are doing it together. Now let's talk a little bit about some virtual reality misconceptions because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about virtual reality. There's a lot of, you know, we, obviously all of us in this room, we're, we're, we're learning, we're figuring things out, but there's, there's, there's a lot of people out there that don't know other, you know, things about virtual reality. So, real danger. If I go into a virtual reality game, am I, is, are my children gonna get burnt by lava? And flames engulf them? char them to a crispy, crusty, delicious corpse? No, that's not how it works. That is a misconception. It's all virtual. That's why, that's why, that's why, they, that's why it's called virtual reality. Uh, pregnancy. If I, if I play a virtual reality game, am I going to get pregnant with, with a dog in a park with a ball in its mouth? No, of course not. That's, 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 that's insane. And that's a, uh, believe me, people, I, there's all sorts of folks that are thinking that's a real thing, and that's not true. Um, so let's talk about some other misconceptions, uh, common misconceptions uh, uh, of VR. So there's the uh, VR headsets are made from horse parts. They're not. They're not made from horse parts. Um, they're made from plastic and other, you know, who knows what kind of chemicals are in them, but they're not, they're not, it's not horse parts. Uh, VR causes infertility. Well, isn't that ironic? Because the last, the pregnancy thing, it's sort of contradicting this, you know, so two completely opposite misconceptions are floating around. No, it does not cause infertility, at least not that we know of yet. Uh, owning a VR headset attracts wild animals. In some cases, this has happened, but we think it's the Cheetos crust stuff or what? It's not the VR headset itself. It's the other food-related particles. Uh, VR is imaginary. It's not. It's a real... Hardware is real. Maybe some of the content within is... is I guess that could be considered imaginary. But it's also real software, so it's not imaginary. And that's an inconcept misconception, <laughs> not an inconcept. <laughs> Uh, if you are in VR after midnight, you have to beg the VR man to let you leave. There's no such thing as a VR man. And, uh, and you can stay in VR after midnight, it's fine. It's, that's like a gremlins thing. Um, we are trapped in hell and earth is actually hell. That might be true. That could be true. We don't really know what happens uh, after we die, and for all we know, this could be post-death and we're living in, in literal hell. But we don't know that, but we're just going to say that's a misconception and move on. 
So let's talk about the pros and cons of VR. So, you know, there are pros and cons of the, you know, in VR, as I'm sure many of you know. Let's, let, let's, let's list them out together. So there's the, um, no one can see your disgusting eyes <laughs> when you're in VR. <laughs> uh, you, you, you become the world's biggest Caesar. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess that leads us over to cons then. Um, the VR man will leave corn under your pillow. <laughs> so, I guess the VR man is a real thing. That is, that, that is not a misconception. I've got my wires crossed. Okay, so, so how does VR work anyway? You're probably asking yourself, how do, I, how do I get into this thing? How do I do this? How do I get involved? Well, not like, I mean, <laughs> this guy, I mean, you could see, like, you, you, you could try pushing your face through the LCD screen of your laptop and expect it to act like a squishy, you know, I don't know, like one of those Frisbee things from the 90s. I don't know what they're called. But it won't do that. That's not how VR, that's not how it works. Um, you need a VR device to, to experience VR. So let's take a look at, at, uh, at some of the devices that are currently available. We've got the Hot Topic, um, very popular amongst the VR enthusiasts. There's the Oculus Ripped. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I, I, I haven't read it, I just hear it. So Oculus Ripped, uh, whatever. Um, sponsored by Fritos and Red Bull. Uh, there's the uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse Gear VR, which is uh, another fun VR setup that you can get currently. Uh, or get the lead paint edition PSVR set, uh, sponsored by Rite Aid and AT&T and Booking.com. <laughs> There's VR Lite, which is very tiny. It's just this little thing you swallow. Uh, and then there's the huge, uh, big, the, the big beast of VR that we all know about, uh, the, the, the monster energy jacked up thing. So that's, so you need that to, you need to get one of those things to do VR. Um, so what, what are the parts that make up VR? You know, and this applies to all of those previous, uh, inventions that we just looked at. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's break it out. This is like one of those blowed up, blown up, you know, like, whatever they're called things. Uh, so we got the strap. We all know about the strap. You gotta tighten that up and you know, adjust it for everybody that you put in VR for yourself. You've got the central hole. And uh, every, every one of these sets has these things. Uh, you've got your two tiny stainless steel cooking pans. Those are essential components to VR. Um, the little guy. <laughs> Then you have, <laughs> you got your extra parts. Every VR set has that. The batteries. <laughs> the rim and then the TV holder. <laughs> so you can take that off and set your TV on that. It's like a, it's like a, you know, those dinner tray things, whatever. Uh, so, so now you must be thinking like, all right, I just, I just got to run down a VR where, you know, all this crazy stuff. Like, where do I begin at this point? This is wild, you know, like, here I am. Uh, so I think it's a, good, it's a good point in time to talk about virtual reality today, year 2017. Let's talk about where we are now, okay? Um, we're at a place now where we can play VR anywhere. <laughs> we can play it on the job. The technology's really gotten to the point where you can, you, you don't, you, you, wherever you want to be, Mobile, you know, I mean, this, this gentleman's obviously probably using that computer to play because we're seeing what he's seeing. But, um, but yeah, so you can play any VR anywhere. That's pretty incredible. And, uh, and because of that, you know, there, there's a lot of games that are possible with the present technology of 2017. So let me take a look at some of these games that, that, that could exist if, if devs, you know, like you or watching this uh, bothered to, to make them. Um, the Inner Void. Uh, you can confront the dark, deep inner void inside of you. Who needs therapy? Uh, Kid Cuisine, Ruth, Ruth Chris Steakhouse. <laughs> uh, 
both came together, <laughs> came together to fund this one. Um, the uh, couple other games, uh, Mega Super <laughs> Basketball Extreme VR. You, ha you haven't played basketball until you've played Mega Super Basketball Extreme in VR. There's a lot of people playing on the court. Uh, and it's only on Keith, Toby Keith's Shut Up and Ride, Ride, Hold On Tour. Sponsored by Denny's. All right. Uh, investment Banker Bro VR. You can, from the comfort of your own home, you can buy and sell stocks. Uh, you, you know, you, you, it's, this guy's really thinking about his next move. And it's all virtual. That's the beauty of it. This could be out now, right now. Uh, virtual Rick and Morty Simulator. <laughs> this is a game that, uh, that could exist right now. Uh, but guess what? It's coming out on 420. Oh, my god. Uh, yeah. Jeez, Rick, I think the network's going to be upset. Morty, relax. They're the one that chose the 420 launch date. <laughs> kind of set us up for the joke there. Uh, I had nothing to do with <laughs> Whatever, who cares? All right. So, um, Silly String Attacker, Virtual. Um, <laughs> run around your neighborhood and spray little kids in the face with Silly String. This could be a game you could be playing right now on the current technology of VR in 2017. Someone just needs to make it. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, Rabbit, Muscle Adventure. That's... Uh, only for Harley... <laughs> only for <laughs> Harley Davidson. Which hope... Which I think... I hear they're getting into the VR business, so we'll see. Um... And the uh, confusion simulator. <laughs> Just, what is going on? <laughs> uh, a partnership with PETA, San Francisco 49ers, Better Call Saul Levi's. Rated E for everyone. This is a, this will be a blast if it existed. All right, so, so, you know, seeing all those games, we kind of know, like, hey, the whole family Everybody can enjoy VR, obviously, based off of what we've just seen. So let's take a deeper dive in, in, in how VR can be used by, by the fam. So mom and dad, we'll focus on dad first. What's he doing in that headset, <laughs> sitting next to his wife? Well, he's playing jet ski VR, and he's zooming around the waves. All the while, sitting next to his wife, she's probably reading a book, and he's jet skiing around. So, you know, that's one family member. What about the little jet ski that we all have? Everyone's got a jet ski in their house, the little jet ski. What is the jet ski doing in VR? <laughs> VR for jet skis. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, it's so dumb. Uh, the teens, you're a teenager, you're going, how can I use VR for my, for my benefit? Well, put pops in it, put him in some weird, cool location, and then he's not going to know about the crazy rager that's going on behind him. <laughs> Look at, you could throw, you could do the pong drink game, the little ball throw, whatever that is. Incredible. That's a thing you can do. Family. Uh, drive the kids to school. It's never been more entertaining. Never has driving the children to school. The kids are calm because they're in cool VR worlds. You're calm because you're in a calm, meditative VR game as you drive them to school. Your youngest is in the front seat with a sucker stuck to her forehead. Um, and then even, even your grandparents can, can enjoy VR. There's even, even a spot for the, for the, for the, for the old elderlies. Um, they can go and vacation anywhere now. 
you know? I mean, and I think that's, that's a very, we're all thinking about that. We're like, oh, the, 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 el the elderly folks want to go on vacations. That's sort of a thing that people think VR, or that we all know VR is going to be a, a, use, a use for. Uh, so let's talk about some of the top 10 places to visit in VR. Number one. Gelson's. <laughs> you know, honestly, that's probably the only place that we need to really talk about, so let's move on. The, um, let's talk about the history of VR. Where, 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 what, how do we get here? How do we get to this place? Uh, it's a longer road than most people might realize. Um, <laughs> The, ca the cave, ca in the cave days, the cave people, I did a lot of research about this, so this is all real stuff. The cave people, um, they, they, they had the idea of virtual reality. The way about it was a little different than our current technology allots or allows for. Um, the caveman looked and found the bugs, the bug of vision. He grabbed that bug. Uh, he found the bug of movement. Two very central, important pieces of VR. And then the most overlooked feature of VR, the bug of fun. Got to find that fun. And he, and he took those bugs and he, he mushed them all together. And he's like, I think I got something here, boys. But no, that's not... It's caveman, caveman technology. You can't, that doesn't, it's not how it works. That's not right. Um, then many years later, the Mayans would paint people blue and rip their innards out in front of people. And it's a very gruesome, violent, horrible sacrifice ritual thing that they would do. And then a lot of years later, uh, the stick was invented, which is, is a lot of kids, a lot of, like, maybe our grandparents, I think, they would throw it, stick. Uh, it's a, sort of the first toy, you know, it's like the stick is commonly referred to as the first toy. Uh, then, a few years later after that, boom, the virtual boy. And it was like, hello, we've arrived. This is real now. So, now let's talk about the future of VR. Let's, let's, let's dive into... Um, you know, where we're heading, because this is really the meat of it, right? I heard a lot of talk earlier, all these lofty, hopeful things, and I think that, I think it's true. I think it's true. So what, let's talk about our senses. Right now, we've got sight and sound. That's pretty much what we have. We've got those covered. We're at a point now where it's working. It feels good. Very immersive. Sense of presence is there. But what about taste? That's coming up next in the future. Maybe not next, but it's coming at some point, 100 years maybe. Uh, so imagine, you know, you, you can just use your hands as the controller and you can kind of, you've got a virtual hunk of whatever it is and you can eat it and taste it and it actually goes into your stomach and, you know, it supplies you nutrients and stuff. And that's something that I think people are going to just go nuts for. Because you could eat anything you want. You could eat anything, <laughs> like wood chips and crow meat. All right, that's a, that was a, look, there's some bad ones in here, right? They're not, they're not all good. Uh, okay, so touch. Let's move on to touch. Um, God, could you imagine just being able to feel things in VR, like being actually, you know, you're in VR and, and whatever's going on around you, you could feel it. It'd be pretty amazing. So let's talk about one example of that. So, so imagine the feeling of the girl on the ground's meat against your foot as you kick her repeatedly in the sides. And then shortly after that, the sweaty palms of the principal shoving you violently onto the ground. And then the feeling of the grass and dirt as your side of your body smashes and bounces against the, um, you know, the, the fairly unkempt 
uh, I don't know, foyer, courtyard, whatever this is, I don't know. That, that's what the sense of touch will be able to bring us. <laughs> and these pe this is a real scene, isn't it? <laughs> we could just watch this for a while <laughs> and just, just pontificate on what maybe led to this moment. I'm not ugly. No, that's bad. She's like, my sweater isn't cheap. I, who knows? Whatever. <laughs> Pitching on what caused this fight. God, that girl gets a good kick in. Boom. <laughs> Oof. Oh, that second kick is... Oh, my God. Okay, next, next. Um, the sense of smell. God, being able to smell things. You know, they say smell is the strongest um, brain uh, thing. Of all of the brain things to trigger memories and whatnot. You know what I'm talking about. So what kind of awesome things does the future hold for us? So like, maybe we could finally, huh? <laughs> yeah? Maybe the worst joke of the, maybe the most dead, dead joke. Is that the most dead joke, joke of the thing? Nope. Because Hulk Hogan's here now. <laughs> that is Hulk Hogan. That's what he looks like right now. You haven't seen him for a while. He's Okay. Um, uh, uh, who knows what kind of incredible smell-related opportunities will come in virtual reality with smell tech. I don't... <laughs> Whatever. Anyways... Uh, the sixth sense, you know, we can tap into that sixth sense. I think, we, I think we all know that humans, there's a little something deeper than those first senses. We've got a sixth sense. So in VR, we can exploit that in the future where we'll be able to see dead people. <laughs> and I think more importantly, um, we'll be able to see, um, we'll be able to see and sort of hang out with all, every, all, any dead person, really, like, uh, like any kinds of dead people in the future, especially Tom Cruise <laughs> and Steed. Um, so that's, that's another, that's a, that's a really exciting thing that we get to look forward to in the future in, 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 as we plow forward in this industry. And, you know, we're all learning. We're all, we're all figuring it out. So what about love in VR in the future? Um, you know, right now you have to go either, I mean, nowadays you can go on a dating app or you have to go to a bar or party or something to meet, meet somebody uh, to fall in love. But now you can, in the future, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, technology will be at such a point that you'll be able to fall in love with the VR technology. And, um, and this goes for guys or girls, you know, you find a good VR headset and, and uh, d you know, fall in love and then you move in together, it's, 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 it's kind enough to do the dishes on a night where you couldn't get to them, I mean, it's not always doing the dishes, but sometimes, and doing the laundry for you. And then, of course, again, totally, you know, didn't have time to include both genders here, but this goes both ways. S satisfy you sexually in the bedroom, the, the, um, the headset itself, the VR headset. The, the technology will get to the point where it'll have things on it that can do all that. <laughs> That's the future of VR. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about future inventions, future VR inventions. Um, because there's a lot, of, lot, lot to look forward to there. VR for dogs. I mean, right now, it's for us, but why not? Dogs are pretty smart. I don't know if you guys have dogs, but they're smart. My dogs are sort of, I almost think of them as little people. Uh, they have personalities and little, they're just interesting. So why not VR for dogs? And they could, they could <laughs> chase sticks and run around. And this might be like, this is maybe 50 years out, maybe. Like, this is like after, this is a while, from, as we... Maybe we'll, maybe we'll figure out a way to communicate with dogs before we do this, so we sort of know we're not scaring them or anything. 
Um, VR shoes. So you can wear nice, comfortable pair of shoes, but then if you're on the bus station or whatever, you can just whip them off and boom, they're a headset and you're in VR. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. <laughs> VR for cats is a work in progress. We're talking hundreds of years out. I'm trying to keep this within the next, you know, 25, 50 years. Um, let's talk about some games of the future, VR games of the future. Uh, could you imagine the genius uh, mind of Shigeru Miyamoto? What would he do? I mean, hopefully this will happen sooner than later because I'm truly a huge fan. Um, I, o I could only sit around and, and, and just imagine what he would make. Uh, <laughs> maybe? Maybe? Rated M for mature? <laughs> for what reason, I don't know. I'll let, I'll let you guys all sort of uh, just, um, just let your imaginations run wild on this one because I have no idea. What a dumb slide. <laughs> that is the, this is like the, that's the, the dumbest slide in the whole thing. All right. Uh, so we know, you know, it's pretty clear that by the year 2030, Mars will be colonized <laughs> by humans. And that's, that's a rough approximation of what it will probably look like there in just a little over 10 years. Um, so... When, when, so, you know, not everyone's going to be able to go to Mars in 2030. It's going to be a select group. Who knows what kind of lottery system they're going to do. So a cool VR game in the future could be, uh, for all the folks still trapped on Earth, the <laughs> Elon Musk didn't invite me life on Mars simulator. Sponsored by Gelson's The Supermarket. The Supermarket? Really? The Supermarket. Huh. And they really put super in... Really emphasize super. Uh, all right. Um, save the monkey. We can do it right now together. Let's save the monkey right now. Here we go. We did it. <laughs> now imagine doing that in the future in VR in like 20 years. That's just going to be absolutely incredible. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the end of my... <laughs> Oh shit! Sorry, sorry. That's the end of my. That's the end of my of my of my keynote or my um, PowerPoint keynote. Uh, just want to mention that Squanch Tendo, uh, the studio I I, I founded, and um, uh, with with an we have an amazing team. We're looking for uh, Unreal Engine Four programmers. So uh, go to our website and take the test, and uh, join the future of VR. We're going to make that, uh, that Mia Motes Toes game. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you guys so much. Enjoy VRLA. Seriously, you guys are awesome. Thank you.